is Sunday, December 4th, and this is your daily financial news. Just so you know, I've already recorded the December Friday, December 2nd, and Saturday, December 3rd videos. They will be up. I'll probably schedule them for 8 a.m. Pacific and 9 a.m. Pacific, so you will get those. I just gave you my raw notes for Friday and Saturday. They will be up momentarily. But let's get into the five things that you need to know for Sunday, December 4th. Uh, The first thing, we need to talk about mortgage rates. Mortgage rates, cost of capital, payment, affordability. It should not be surprising to learn that one of the reasons that housing became so unaffordable and why I called for a housing crash in transactions and why I called it correctly was because of mortgage rates. Mortgage rates jumped from 3% round number to over 7% in record time, right? Over a 100% increase. That is going to kill demand. And that was phase one of housing crash. Because rates went up so quickly, it also caused phase two, which was supply or interest rate lock-in or whatever sexy title people want to put on it. We are in phase two right now. We will come out of phase two, I believe, on March 15th, the spring selling season. As I have said for quite a while, there are two variables that we need to know to understand what happens March 15th. One is unemployment. Is unemployment 3.7, 4.2, 7.5? Where are we on the scale of unemployment? The other one is interest rates. Interest rates is what I want to talk about here as point number one. I believe what happened last week is we have taken off the table Fed funds of 7% as James Bullard teased or created fear. I believe we've also taken funds rate of 6 off the table. My call of 5% is feeling more and more likely. That means mortgage rates of 10%, like a lot of fear channels we're talking about, is highly unlikely next year. I think 9% is highly unlikely. Could we see eight? No idea. I think there's a chance that we average, average, under 6% this month. I believe the last report, which comes out, I think on Wednesdays, was 6.49. That's the average. I have gotten notes from folks and followers, and thank you so much. I appreciate all my followers, all my comments. I am still the only one uh, responding, right? I don't have a team. It's just me. So if you see a reply, that is for me. So thank you. Some of you have told me that you have gotten rates locked in. Congratulations. At 5.8 and 5.77%. Congratulations. Why is this important? Because I think we learned in July that 6% is a psychological level. I believe if we get to a 30-year mortgage where the average home buyer, this is not investors, home buyer, 62%, 63% of my competition are home buyers, homeowners. If they can get 30-year money below 6 I believe they come back. Now here, watch this. The consumer is predictable. When we are racing from 3% and we get all the way to 7.5, people pull back, right? Phase one, demand destruction. Because they say things like, I could have gotten, I could have, I could, I would have, should have, could have. Because I could have got 4%. Now we flip the script, right? Memories are weird because now they're going to say, hey, I can get 5.7. That's much better than 7.2. And it is. On the average home, a point and a half percent drop in mortgage rates is hundreds of dollars a month. So before, while rates were going up, we were losing the marginal buyer. Rates down a point and a half, we actually add buyers. Now, I'm not calling for, I haven't changed my opinion. Housing transaction crash, prices flat. I am not, I'm not calling for a run up or a rundown. We have years of flat home prices. We had 
two years, in two years, we had a decade of appreciation. I'm not changing my call. Five years flat, you know, plus or minus 1%. But mortgage rates are important. So on March 15th, will mortgage rates be under six or over? That's an important question. We go into the spring selling season with five and a half percent mortgages and an unemployment rate sub five percent, and we have no trend and we have no supply. It's going to be an interesting market. It'll be a very different market than 30 year mortgage rate at seven and unemployment at six. Right. So, again, we got to figure out where rates will be March 15th. So if you've locked a loan, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see what the low rate here is recently. Again, the lowest I've heard of so far is 5.77, and I also heard of 5.8. But, yeah, rates below 6. Who would have figured? So that's an important one. Blackstone. Uh, as I said in my Saturday or my Friday session, I think it must have been Friday. Uh, one of the companies, again, one of my goals is to deploy fifty grand into dividend stocks. I just like to keep everybody up to date. It's not that it's a big purchase. But I did buy 25 more shares. So now I have 50 shares of Blackstone. Friday, Blackstone dropped. Uh, I think it dropped like 7% in the morning. And I picked up another 25 shares because there was fear in the market. Blackstone's private REIT limited withdrawals. This is the kiss of death for FTX and Celsius and crypto mine and all this stuff. Remember limited withdrawals? Here's the difference. Blackstone is not FTX. In Blackstone's paperwork, it says in big, bold letters, we limit monthly withdrawals to 2% and quarterly redemptions, are called redemptions, to 5%. So Blackstone, because they've had redemption requests, limits withdrawals. Now as a REIT, that's important because again, a REIT has illiquid assets. It is hard to sell real estate quickly for the right price. You could always fire sell it, but that's not what Blackstone is doing. So what you also saw on Friday is Blackstone sold 49% of its ownership in two Vegas casinos above their book or above their mark. So Blackstone is being a very, very good operator, I believe. And I put a couple of bucks. I don't know. What is that? Four grand. So it's. It is what it is, right? I'm trying to get to $50,000 in dividend stocks as I've shared in my yearly goal. So I moved another four grand to Blackstone. I am not a stock guy. Please do not follow my advice. I'm just sharing you what I did because I believe Blackstone is fine. Flip that over to the public market for REITs. I think there's a lot of pain coming to REITs. I have been talking about syndications blowing up, uh, you know, um, Payment uh, monthly or quarterly distribution stopping. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of pain in retail, hotels, warehouses. So I think the REIT space is going to be some pain. And remember, what's his name? Is his name Jeremy? There's some billionaire that CNBC keeps parading around who runs, I think, Starwood or something. I suspect there's a lot of billionaires in the real estate game that are in a lot of pain because their debt structure is wrong. Remember, what I'm trying to help you understand is the same stupidity that happened in single family in 05, 06, 07 happened in commercial. Short-term paper, interest only, bad assumptions. Lots of pain coming. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. I think Grant Cardone is right. There's a bit, lot of pain coming and opportunity as well. Ooh. See if I can hold that sneeze off for a little while. So again, I don't think... Um, I don't think Blackstone's in trouble, but I do think the REIT market is in trouble. Canada. So I got an update from Canada uh, market. I'm just going to share the numbers that were shared with me. Uh, apparently, 13% of the Canada housing market has already hit their trigger rates. I think it was two or three months ago we talked about trigger rates. Trigger rates shortly are a, basically you have, call it a five-year loan. It's fixed. But buried inside the details say, hey, if rates get to some point, we have to trigger a, a payment change. So 13% of mortgages in Canada have already hit their trigger rate. Banks are, shockingly, as I called, extending and pretending. What does that mean? They're taking your 30-year amortization 
and pushing it out to 40. This is just what banks do. This is happen- This is a problem, right? For 40 years, rates fell. So adjustable rate mortgages made sense. I think for the next three to four years, they're going to be up and there'll be a lot of pain in Canada, Australia, the UK. 50% of loans in Canada uh, as of March 20, so what's that, two years ago, two and a half years ago, are variable interest rate loans. People were looking for the lowest payment. Uh, so again, Canada is just, uh, there's there's a lot of pain in the mortgage market. When you have interest, some of the mortgages in Canada had a one on it, right? We were happy with 2.8. Canada had a one. You take a 1% mortgage to four, that's a different payment. Very different payment. Inflation. This is something that I'm trying to help you understand my vision of inflation. Again, remember easy stuff, hard housing, really, really hard wages. Looks like um, Bank of America agrees with me. Bank of America is trying to get people to understand that inflation could be a 10 year battle. Now, I don't think it's a 10 year battle. I think it's a five year battle. I think everything happens quicker these days. But I do believe inflation stays uncomfortably high until 2025, 2026. Uncomfortably high, meaning above 2%. Yeah. So again, uh, anytime inflation has gotten above 5 this is CPI, it's taken a decade to get it to 2%. Now, again, I think things happen faster today. So I think it happens in five years, but we shall see. Reuters and John Burns, again, shout out Lance Lambert from Fortune Magazine. He and I talked Thursday at 10 o'clock. He shared with me that John Burns Real Estate Consulting, somebody I follow, respect, and have huge admiration for. John Burns is calling for a 20 to 22% collapse in national median home price by 2024. That hurts. Because that's not what I'm calling, and I haven't changed my opinion. John Burns, again, calling for a 20 to 22% collapse in home prices by 2024. Reuters has also gone negative. They now are calling for a 12% drop. Realtor.com, something I shared in my Saturday update, I thought I would share here. Realtor.com is on the opposite side. They are calling for 5.1% appreciation. It should be known. I think all three are wrong. I think we are plus or minus 1%. And most importantly, transactions. That's where the, I don't know why everybody talks about price. Transactions are going to be sub 4 million. Housing is in a recession. I would argue housing is in a depression. If you are paid on commission in housing, it hurts. If you are a builder, you're going to build so much less. Housing is going to pull the country into a recession next year, in my opinion. We will see by how much, based on point one, interest rates. Does a mortgage have a five on it or a seven? That will be important. What do we average next year? If we average seven and a half, maybe John Burns is right. It certainly gives me pause when somebody I know, respect, and admire is calling for such a big drop. That's big, 20% in 2024, so the next 25 months. That's like 1% a month. Think about that. That's 1% a month, roughly. I don't see it. I don't see it. I think everybody forgets that there's this thing called a demand curve. Demand curve. In housing, what does that mean? Number of transactions right? Because that's how housing is measured. If John Burns or anybody calling for a negative 20% told me that we would average 6 million sales in 2023 and 2024, I would probably agree with them. I would say, you know what? You're right. What I believe John Burns is missing and all these crash callers are missing is our demand curve is not 6 million. It's 3.9. It's 3.8. It's 3.7 million. That demand curve is fundamentally different. We have destroyed demand and destroyed supply. 
But hey, we will see. We will see. And then lastly, give you an update. We have loaded another session of our mastermind for free. Uh, we have just uploaded Omar's um, presentation, which was awesome, and interaction with the audience. So if you are a member of my course, uh, give me about five minutes. I will go turn it on right now. Uh, if you haven't yet buy the course, buy it and save some big money. Once I'm done loading this mastermind, the cost of my course goes to $399. Buy it today, $329. Start doing the work now in December so you can figure out average and only do great deals next year. Lastly, if you spend the money, do yourself a favor and join the group. I have an amazing group that is absolutely free for anybody who buys the course called uh, one rental at a time works. It's on Facebook. Thousands of people celebrating, doing the work, taking pictures, networking. We are now big enough where subgroups are meeting, hold, you know, having accountability calls and the like. Uh, Amy, shout out to Amy in, in the Bay Area who's running an accountability call uh, in the Bay Area. So again, join the group, be a part of it, do some work together, network. Lastly, keep stop watching fear. Stop watching fear. You don't need it. Do the work. Recessions are amazing opportunities. Be cautious. No gambling, but move with intention. Get away from the tree of fear. Look at the forest of opportunity. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.